Hey, what's going on, everybody? Bauer Brown here. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope that everybody had a wonderful weekend and your week is starting out okay. Uh, my weekend was fabulous. Mm, well, actually, it was mediocre, but <laughs> that's okay. I got, got a lot of work done. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, what are we going to be doing in this video today? Um, as you probably guessed by the uh, thumbnail and the title, we are going to be placing trees. We're going to plant lots and lots of trees, just like Johnny Appleseed, right? We're going <laughs> to we're going to be doing it. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, uh, the way that we plant these trees. Now, you already have a few methods at your disposal, right? So why do we need more? Well, one to make it easier. And what are these other methods? OK, well, the old default standby method is to do it by hand, right? That's method number one. That's more for things like around the farm and places like that, uh, where you just want to place one tree here, one tree there. You get the idea. All right. Method number two is to use a spline. Now, these trees along the edge of this roadway here, that's how I planted those trees. I used the spline and it worked out pretty good. So sometimes I do use that method depending on the situation. Uh, method number three is to use the mesh paint tool. I also sometimes use that method. Again, depends on the situation. And method number four is what we're getting to right now, which is the tree generator. Okay, tree generator is a script. Um, and well, it's a script in combination with an info layer. All right, same way that we did field dimensions with bitmap and the same way we did foliage creator. As a matter of fact, this is a uh, this script is developed by the same person, Kevin K98 from the LS Mod Company, all right? This guy's got lots and lots of them and they're all good ones too, really good ones. All right, and we're probably going to be using the majority of them uh, throughout this video series of mine. All right, so what about this tree generator? I know, you're get on with it, Bauer. We, we want to know. All right, so this really is probably one of the easier scripts. And the reason for that is because it utilizes the same GRLE that, uh, the same info layer, basically, that your foliage creator uses. Couldn't get any easier than that, right? Um, so you don't even have to create another info layer. We're, we're pretty much done. Just install the script and go. All right. For the most part. Now, there are some differences, and I'm going to walk you through these. And I'm going to try to do this without screwing you guys up and confusing the heck out of you, okay? Uh, now, I know this whole series and all of my demonstrations so far have been on a standard size map. All right. That's because everything I'm doing right now up to this point is for beginners, which you guys are. So you should be doing it on a standard size map, not getting ahead of yourself and doing 4Ks and stuff like that. Um, so I know all of my questions after this video are going to be it didn't work. Why? Because you're on a 4K. All right. It, uh, <laughs> I know. Trust me, I did the same thing. My my first map was a 4K, so I can't pick on you. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do want to let you know, though, that some of my future videos are going to be going over some of these same things, but for bigger maps. Right. Um, it, I'd like to think I wouldn't have to because a lot of it to me is self-explanatory. But what is self-explanatory to me, other people still struggle with. So I get it. So I'm going to try to help these guys through these things the best I can. All righty. So as far as this script goes, where do we get it? All right. Well, you might have guessed it would be back here at. Uh, let me close up some of these windows here. Um, yep. You might have guessed it was at LS Mod Company, right? So go to lsmodcompany.com and you want to click on forum up here at the top. Now, for those of you guys who are just joining me and this is your first video, you may want to go back and watch some of my older videos. They're, very, they're pretty recently old. Um, there was field creation made fast and easy where we went over to field dimensions with bitmap and the foliage creator because some of the methods that we're going to be either referring to or using in this video, we had already covered in those previous two. All right. So if I skip by anything, that's where you're going to find your answers in those videos. All righty. Um, and also, if you did not know, if you're just joining us. Uh, this LS Mod Company website requires a membership. OK, so you want to sign up and log in. Uh, make sure you turn off your ad blocker because, you know, they re rely on ads for, you know, revenue and stuff like that to keep all these great scripts up on the Internet for us. Right. To keep their website running. 
uh, and we do want to support them. So make sure you turn off your ad blocker. All right. I know it's annoying sometimes, but it is what it is. And, you know, we like to show our love. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, make sure you get over to LS Spot Company. Oh, and it's also in German. So you might want to use a browser like Edge or something like that because it will auto translate for you. Um, alrighty. So anyhow, get over to LS Mod Company. That's ls-modcompany.com. Uh, go up here to forum. Don't worry about any of these drop down lists here. Just click on forum. Click on it. There we go. Okay. So scroll on down. Now here we are not going to stop at Farming Simulator 22. Okay. We're going to keep on going down to Farming Simulator 19. Uh, and this is something that's worth noting. I know a lot of time these guys are Googling for this and that, and you're looking for videos and you're looking for tutorials and, and all this stuff and stuff answers for LS 22. Uh, the majority of things that we used in FS 19 are also available. Did I say LS 22 <laughs> farming sim 22? That's cause it's the, it confused me being on this LS mod company. They call it LS 22. Anyhow, uh, moving on. Most of the uh, methods and techniques and, and most things FS19 still relate to FS22. All right. So you guys don't have to, you know, don't have to strictly adhere to everything FS22 because a lot of 19 stuff does work. All righty. So get on with it. You're in the section here for Farming Simulator 19. You want to look towards the bottom at script collection. OK, we'll wait for the ad to do its thing. Thank you, Ed. Uh, and right at the top of this list right here, very first one on the list, you guys probably seen this already. If you were messing around with field dimensions and everything else, you probably got super excited when you seen it. Uh, tree, ge tree generator, first thing on the list. So go ahead and click on that. Uh, from here, you can read the instructions if you want to. I'm going to skip by them. If you look at this, there's a, a hyperlink here at the very top of the page. If you want to click on that, that'll take us to GitHub. OK, now in here, you can dig around and see if you can find the link to download the actual Lua. I am not going to do that. However, I am going to uh, click on here where it says raw. OK, and that's going to open up a text version of for me. And I'm just going to copy this. Just hit control A, highlight everything on the screen, control C to copy it. Get yourself back over to the Giants editor. Go to window, go to script editor, and the same way that we've done it for the uh, the last two videos or the last two times we installed scripts, uh, go to user here, right click on that, create new script, give it a name, and when the blank window comes up, just paste everything in there. Alrighty, and then then you're good. Your script is all done. Now, uh, on a standard size map, for the most part, you should be done. OK, now there, there's some variables in here. So I don't you know, don't don't take this at face value that you're like, hey, I did exactly what you did and it didn't work. OK, well, something is probably different in your setup. You know, maybe you have a different something's different. OK, it could be maybe your UPP is different. You're on a bigger map for one that could be different. Um, maybe some of your GRLE sizes for whatever reason uh, is different. Now, I know sometimes you, you don't always have to be the guy to have done this. I've seen people that have downloaded blank maps where the map creator don't know what they were thinking, but did all kinds of craziness. And that's why things didn't work. So take it with a grain of salt. So there might be some variables here that keep this at least from not working right out of the box for you. Okay. So before we go any further than this, all right, I'm just going to go through the actual script with you guys and let you know what's what. All right. So at the very top of the list here, OK, we have where it says variables. We have our path. Now, these paths might look familiar to you. If you go to our foliage creator, they are the exact same paths. OK, so if you have foliage creator installed, uh, just copy both of those paths right over to our tree creator. OK, our tree generator. Now, if you don't have foliage uh, creator installed, you might want to go back, watch that video and install it. Uh, if not, you can go ahead and uh, find these paths. They would be in your data folder, right, for your mod map. And then you would find like your fruit density GRLE. You can right click on that and copy as path. Now, be careful when you put those back into the editor, when you paste it back in. Uh, because it's going to be putting backslashes and you need to change all those backslashes to forward slashes. All right. If not, it's going to screw things up and you can do that for both of your files. Now, 
you'll notice that on mine here, I do not have path for field dimensions filled in. Okay, and why not? Uh, there's a misunderstanding, it seems, that most people think because this path is here, uh, this is just a variable. If you look through the code, you can see that it's not actually needed, okay? And I choose not to use it under most circumstances. Now, there are some times that I do, uh, but for the most part, I do not. And why do I not? All right, well, in this case, for this, this particular map, this standard size map, Probably it would work. I got to check my uh, I got to check my file sizes, my dimensions, um, but it may work. Usually it will not because your field dimensions, you have probably adjusted the uh, uh, the dimensions on it for the resolution. So it's a, it's a bigger file size. It needs to be like 2048. You're probably up at 4096 or possibly even higher. Uh, depends on the size of your map. All right, so that's most of the reason I choose not to use that because the field or the dimensions that I work with are not the dimensions that are required. Okay, so the way that most people get around this is to install a second, or not install, but create a second, um, a second info layer, and then you do it exactly the same way that you did the first one. Do you remember back in field dimensions when we created a PNG? And we made that the size that we wanted to. We went into the i3D through the text editor. Okay. And then we, you know, we made sure that the file path said PNG. Then we went into the editor itself. We click save and it created that GRLE for us at the same size as our PNG. All right. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the field dimensions video. The field creation made faster and easier. Give that one a good watch and it explains exactly how that's done. Okay, so basically you would just create two copies of it and the second one you would name field dimensions two. Okay, and that second field dimensions, that PNG, you would create at a much smaller or on a maybe bigger resolution, I guess it would be. Um, your file size would be smaller. So it would be 2048 by like a 2048 for a standard size map. OK, so that's kind of the way that people get around that. Um, not uh, I haven't decided yet. I know I'm in the middle of this video, but I haven't decided whether we're actually going to go through that or not, only because I think it's absolutely not necessary. All right. So if you've been following along, the only thing that this this field dimensions option does for you, OK, is when you're in an info layer paint mode. Right. So like I'm in here and uh, as you're painting along, right. If you get too close to the edge of your field, it will keep it from actually, you know, putting trees onto your field or, you know, putting your foliage onto your field. All right. And I think it's just as easy to come along the edges of my field. Now, I don't lay my foliage. I don't put down my grass and everything else on a super large scale using this script. All right. I have other ways of getting that onto the map. Um, and that's usually the way that I do things. OK, um, if you choose to do it that way, you, you may want to have that that secondary version of your field dimensions. Right. So so that works together the way that you want it to. All righty. Uh, now, for this video here, you might see on my right hand side that I have tree generator. OK, some people do this as well. Uh, I was only doing this because this is actually like the third or fourth time I'm shooting this video, believe it or not. <laughs> and I, I originally was going to shoot it with this option, but this is not needed. OK, it really it, it's not needed. All right. So once you have this script installed, um, what else did I want? Oh, actually, I want to go over a few more things on here. So let's go back there. All right. So like I said, this is not needed only because, like I said, one, Honestly, you should never be planting trees that close to your fields. Um, if you are, pencil it in by hand. This way you'll keep at least some separation between you and the field. Uh, because I'll tell you what, the script itself, it still gets really tight to the edge of the field with trees, sometimes on the field a little bit. Uh, so trees, it's not a good option to use that. And with foliage, eh, okay, it's a good option, but it is what it is. All right, second on the list down here is the uh, bits. We really don't need to best mess with the bits. That's already been set up uh, when we did fruit density and field dimensions. So we already did that. The bits are already taken care of for us. 
Um, the use bit. Now, the use bit, what that means is, like I said, this uses the same GRLE as the foliage creator. So if we go up to foliage creator, all right, and scroll down a little bit here. Remember these sections that we had available to us, right? Uh, section number one was grass. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Section number two was our, our grass deco option. Sec section number three was our forest option. And if you were following along with the video, you probably figured out that you can add a fourth, fifth, and sixth sections as well. All right. Well, these are your bits. Okay. So grass is bit one. Whatever your GRE value, one, that's bit one. Uh, GRLV, GRLE value of two, this grass deco is bit two. Uh, forest would be bit three and then so on down the line bit four bit five it's just the way that the uh, grle keeps track of uh, what your sections are here it assigns them like a bit value and a color okay so that's how it, it knows so uh, what i do is now it wants to know bit value okay so basically when you color when you're in your foliage creator all right let me minimize this go back to my foliage creator here all right so here's my bit values one two and three all right so if i'm going to make a forest let's say i want to make a forest over here somewhere all right so i'm going to color this in now this is going to be bit value three because i'm using forest uh, you can choose anything out of that list that you want i i tend to mostly use forest um only because you know i'm planting trees and i want it to be in a forest <laughs> Uh, sometimes I use this script outside of a forest, so I can't really, I can't really say that it's strictly for those purposes. Um, and then in those instances, I will pick like grass. I'll change the bit value to one or two or whatever I happen to be using at the time. All right. So that's my foliage creator. I just went through and I set everything via that foliage creator. Okay real nice and easy and then remember to click save every time you do anything inside of your uh, info layer as far as painting is concerned click save when you're done all right so let's get back there to our uh to our script file here all right so the next thing down on the list was factor now i have fifty thousand set at my factor um you probably don't have the note behind yours this is a note that i made for a much bigger map i was working on if you were to use these numbers right now you would probably end up with so many trees you, you just wouldn't believe it um this thing does create a lot of trees so keep that in the back of your mind uh it just looking at these two areas right here that i have i think this area here has over two thousand trees and this area over here has over a thousand all right and you might be right now saying bs bauer you are, are completely full of it like what are you smoking there is not three thousand trees between those two little patches i would bet a paycheck on it honest to god there there definitely is this thing definitely creates way more trees than than you'll have anticipated all right so uh when you do this remember to uh as you go through here to keep your uh, keep your values small, start small and work your way up. Because if you overdo it, uh, you're going to create so many trees. You you might even crash your system. Um, now there is a tree limit. Fine, I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head. It's a pretty big number, but there's a tree limit for your maps. Okay, and and if you exceed that limit, it's not that it won't let you plant any more trees. You can plant as many as you want. Uh, the player, when they're playing the game, they won't be able to plant any more trees. Uh, like right now, if you went into the Elm Creek extension and tried to plant your own tree, it wouldn't let you. Uh, but you can get by that. There's a mod that you can download. Uh, it's like allow additional trees or something like that. So it increases the tree limit so you can plant more. So when guys like me that completely ruin your playing experience <laughs> by planting too many trees. All right. So anyhow, this factor here did the same thing that it did in your foliage creator. Okay. So remember foliage creator, we had this max max factor where we could adjust that up and down. Uh, and that's to increase the density, the number of trees, right? Uh, so a higher value is going to be more trees, a lower value is going to be less trees. And then down here in our actual sections here, we had uh, the factor limit, which kind of did the same thing, right? But on a smaller scale, I guess, or, or on a more individual scale, I should say. All right. And that's the same thing going on here in your tree creator. This factor, the higher the number, the more trees, the lower the number, the less trees. Okay. 
and it's kind of like a density and his tree radius now yours is probably a default i believe is 0.5 i'm not sure i have mine set at 0.75 because i didn't want my trees so tight um some people believe that's the actual radius of the tree they're like how do i know how big a tree is around well you don't it's just a radius so if you can figure now i always think of things in a term of meters so if you can think of a radius that's like 0.75 meters uh, anything within that 0.75 meter circle that you can envision, it will not plant another tree within that radius. OK, so it's to ensure that there's some spacing between your trees and they're not you're not bunching them up tight together. All right. Now, if you have some place that you need a tighter grouping and you need your trees a little bit closer together, then by all means, you can you can lower this down to 0.5 or um, even lower, I've used 0.3, you know, I've, I've gotten some tight groupings. It depends on the situation. Again, I recommend honestly keeping it up to that like one and starting there. And even as 50,000 go lower than that. All right. So th that's, that should be all of your settings that you guys have available to you. Uh, then don't panic. If you're saying, Hey, I see the set scale on yours. I don't have that on mine. All right. I added that to mine. I altered the code for this. Um, and basically what it was is when I set this to true, uh, as it places my trees, it will give them a random scale depending on, you know, some predefined values that I have set here. Uh, I don't use it all that often and I don't recommend that you do either. So this script per, I, I'm not, I don't think I, it's, I'm going to make it available. If I do, it'll be at a later date. I'll throw it up on my website when that's done. Um, but the reason I don't re I don't use it much myself and I don't recommend anybody else does is because when you start messing with the scale of the trees, you have issues logging. You can't cut them down. A tons and tons of issues. So many that it's not even close to worth it. OK, so I don't I don't mess with the scale. The only time I ever mess with the scale of a tree is if I know I'm planting those trees in an area that there's no way the player is going to get there and try to cut them down. OK, so it gets used very rarely. All right. So don't, don't worry about that part. So everything else is set up for you guys. So you can go ahead and click save. Um, you should be ready to go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take mine. It says info layer tree generator. I'm going to take it off of that and I am going to move it back to fruit density. All right, because I'm going to show you how this works out of the box. All right, so mine says fruit density .grle. I'm going to save that. OK. Um, this may or may not work for me right away because I've been changing so many file sizes <laughs> lately that this this may not work. Uh, what what will happen is if you see this shape here, OK, probably what's likely to happen is when you plant your trees they're going to show up really it'll have the same shape but it'll be much bigger like your trees will come all the way out to the corner of the map all right that means your resolution's off on your fruit density um which is kind of a, it's a real pain you know i've come across some of these already where uh well i won't even get into that but it is your resolution okay so your resolution's off so let's let's start this out anyhow before i get too ahead of myself here uh, so I have this all colored in. I already clicked save. Um, I'm on bit value three because I want to do forest. Actually, my bit value, I think I might have set on one. So let me go up to script editor. Uh, yep, my use bit is one and I want to use three. So let's save that. OK, and then from there, I can just run my script. I'm going to I'm going to run my foliage creator. All right. Okay, so there you go. I have nice freshly painted ground, right, with the forest color. And uh, look at all that foliage, right? That's a lot of foliage. But to me, that, that works for a forest. That's, that works really good for a forest, as a matter of fact. All right, so that's, that's what I have set up. So that's pretty good. All right, so now, out of the box, in theory, what you should be able to do you just turn around and plant trees right away. All right. But we have a little bit of setup that needs to get done first. So and don't get too ahead of yourself. You can't just run the script. <laughs> All right. So in my scene graph, OK, you see that I have a section here called trees. All right. And why do I call it trees? Well, because I have trees in there. <laughs> um, there, there was for a while there. There's people that said that this had to be absolutely has to be called trees. 
I, I kind of don't think so. I look through the, uh, let me go through the script editor really quick, really quick. Um, I'm looking to see if it requires that transform group to be called trees. No, it does not. So you can call that anything you want. All right. It doesn't have to be called trees, but I recommend calling it that because, well, you're putting trees in there. What else would you call it? All right. So you need a transform group, a parent transform group uh, with trees. Now, in mine, I have a transform group here with tree templates. OK, now these trees here, you know, I, I, I imported, you know, via an I3D, I imported them in here. Now, I don't use these trees directly, so I don't like highlight this and control B and put that down. Any trees that I need to use, I copy them out of here into my main transform group, right? And they get divided up into my other into my other folders, into my other transform groups, okay? Um, or, you know, I'll copy them out of wherever I need them. But these don't get used. When I'm done with my map, I'll come back and I will delete my tree templates. And the reason I do it that way is like, let's say, you know, you, you lay down, you hit control B and you put two or three of these or five or six or even 10 of them you put down somewhere. Now you don't really know which ones are on the map, which ones are off of the map. It's, it's a mess. Just don't do it that way. If you need trees out of here, just copy them. And that's what we're going to do right now. All right. So I'm going to use all of my pines here. Okay. I'm going to take all those and my spruces. Those, that's what's going to be in my forest. All right, so I'm going to control C to copy those. I'm going to go back up to trees and I'm going to paste them back into my main transform group. Okay, now those trees that I just pasted in there, I'm going to hit control G, make a group out of them. And I'm going to name those um, coniferous. <laughs> yep, coniferous. Uh, basically that's just, they're, they're conifers. Those are trees. They're needle bearing trees, not leafy trees. They have needles. All right. And that's what I'm using in my forest. It's gonna be like a pine forest. All right. So now that I have this ready to go, this is going to be kind of like a sub, a subgroup of templates. All right. So I'm not going to lay these trees into or directly either. The script is going to refer to this, right? So you can make as many of these little groups as you want, right? So you can make elm trees, leafy trees, big trees, little trees, green trees, brown trees, round trees, tall trees, short trees, however many, however you want to divide it up. That's the way you can do it. Okay. So mine right now are coniferous. Those are needle bearing trees. So for this to work, okay, this has to be the top transform group right underneath trees has to be the very first one in the list every time. So if I had another one here that I wanted to use, like big trees, leafy trees, and that was the second one in the group, I would move that up top. So it's at the top of the list right there. All right. So once you have that all set up, uh, and by the way, I, I've seen a lot of videos where the guys or a lot of people are going through and they're having to zero these out. You don't have to do that. Um, not in this case, you don't anyhow, because the way that the script works is it reassigns that value. It gives it an X, Y, and Z value. So no matter what value you had in there originally, it's going to write it a new one based on just trust me, you don't have to do it. OK, um, so anyhow, to do this, we're going to go up to trees. Now, like I said, I've been goofing with this, so I don't know if this is going to work exactly the way I want it to. Um, I might have to fix something here first because I've been messing with my file sizes. But to get this to work, you go up to trees, you highlight trees, go up to scripts, go down to tree creator and give it an old click and it did work okay so i'm good that's it so i i used the same grle for both of these right to do my uh my foliage and to lay my trees and it worked out really really well as you can see i have a nice little forest going on here right looks good you can envision some more rocks in here and maybe some water coming through and Man, it looks like paradise, right? I'm ready to just, you know, set up a lawn chair or a beach chair and do some fishing or something. Looks nice. Pitch a tent, go camping. I am ready. It looks, looks really nice. I like it. All right. Now, like I said, keep in mind, though, because now look what this did. This planted in this little area right here. Just look at that. All right. Now, look at the bottom of my console. 1,294 trees. There's no way that looks like over a thousand trees, but it is. 
it definitely, definitely is. It's over a thousand trees. No joke. Craziness, right? All right. So the one thing I do recommend now, you don't have to necessarily go through and, uh, and zero everything out. But the one thing that I'm going to recommend to you guys, uh, and this is kind of important, is when you go through your templates here and you look at your trees, have a look at your clip distance, okay? Now, these all these pines are set relatively low, and that's really good. I never go higher than 1,000 on my clip distance, and you can see that my spruces are all at 1,000, all right? And that's fine. Leave those at 1,000. That You can do that because then from a distance, you see all your spruces, and that gives you the foresty look. And then when you get closer, that's when all of your uh, pines and stuff start filling in, right? So if you keep everything at a huge clip distance, you're going to bog everything down. You're going to create a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, FPS problems for your players. Uh, things may crash. There's going to be lag. Uh, so this is why I'm saying start low and work your way up. You don't want to get crazy with these trees. Um, and you don't have to keep it to a bare minimum, but don't get crazy. Because uh, right now in just these three sections here, I got probably close to 5,000 trees and that's just insane. Well, not insane because I've done way more than that. I've way, way, but for this little area, that's a lot of trees. All right. So just keep that in mind. Oh, oh yeah. And the other thing with the trees, sorry, forgot that I should have mentioned this. Uh, when you're doing these groups here, like my coniferous group here, if you want more of one tree than you do another, all right, so like say I want more more stage threes, right? The spruce stage three, I want a higher concentration of those than I do any other tree. Just duplicate it, right? Like I can make two more copies. Did that work? Yep. So there you go. So now I'm going to have uh, one, two, three times. I won't say three times as many, but I will have more of these stage three spruces uh, or a higher concentration of them. Right. So that's kind of the way that works. If not, it's going to evenly distribute everything for you, which is fine. Um, but I think this one here that I that I placed here, I had a higher concentration of spruce. Man, I'll tell you what, that's going to look, look really nice to, you know, get some nice bushes and stuff along the edge of this road and get that set up really nice. I, I think that, that looks pretty nice. I like it. Look at me, mom. I'm a mapper. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, Bauer, you are losing your, you know what. All right, so that is pretty much all that there is to that, okay? Um, like I said, the only variable, variable being this uh, field dimensions with bitmap, okay? And you'll notice that on mine, do I have that open still? No. Let me go back up to a script editor here. Like I said, you'll notice on mine that I, I didn't even fill in my field dimensions, okay? Because I, I just don't think it's that important, guys. I don't. Um, I know I do have maps. Don't get me wrong. I have maps that are just riddled with fields, and it's just a lot easier for me to just paint over it because the, the, it's such a tight area in between fields, and there's so many fields that it just makes it easier for me. But that's not common. That doesn't happen a lot. All right, so the way to get around this, like I said, let's go back over to the mod map real quick or the mod folder. Um, what you would do is this field dimensions, okay? All right, now you can see that this one is 4096 by 4096. So right away, if I was to plug this in, it wouldn't work. It just wouldn't. It would, and and that's the thing too. If you don't plan on using it, don't include the address just keep it blank because if you have like say your your field dimensions of 4096 by 4096 and and you have that typed in there uh, and it's not the right dimension it will not plant feet it won't plant trees or foliage in certain parts of your field or your map all right because your dimensions are off and it's going to think that there's fields in places that there's actually not. And you're going to be scratching your head wondering why this works in some areas and it doesn't in others. That's going to be why. All right. So if you want to get around this, if you insist on using this field dimensions, OK, if you insist on doing it, you're going to make a copy of this. All right. So you're going to make a copy of this this uh, PNG. Um, like I said, if you don't know how you're going to want to go back to my field dimensions video, it's a. Uh, 
Field creation made faster and easier. You need to watch that one and it's going to show you how to do that. So you're basically going to make a copy of this so you can make your new GRLE, name it Field Dimensions 2, all right? And then somewhere in your map.i3d, you're going to create uh, another Field Dimensions 2 uh, GRLE. Well, you're going to start it at a PNG until you get into your editor and save it, and then it will create your GRLE. And you'll have to come back and change it again. Like I said, you have to watch that video, guys, because I'm not going to go over this entire thing right here. Um, and then down down bottom there for info layers, you're going to need to create a, a second info layer down there. OK, let me get down there really quick. OK, so right here where you see that I have field dimensions, um, you're going to need to create a second one of these as well and call it field dimensions, too. And you get the idea. All right. And then this way, when you're when you're working on your uh, when you're working on your map, when you go into your script editor in there, OK, this path, this field dimensions, you wouldn't go to the info layer underscore field dimensions. You go info layer underscore field dimensions, too. All right. Um, seems like a lot of work, right? Just so you don't you don't draw over top of your field. Um I, I, me personally, by the time I was in kindergarten, you know, I can stay within the lines when I colored, right? It's not slowing you down too much. It's really not. Like I said, you never want to get trees that close to your field to begin with. So to me, that's just doesn't really serve its purpose. Now I get it for the foliage because I used it here. Um, so it works. It does. But that's not normally how I put down my grass anyhow. And I could fix this in a matter of I could fix this in a couple of brush strokes. Honestly, I can make my brush big enough that, you know, I can limit the texture and have this whole thing filled in in no time. All right. So like I said, if you choose to use it, that's the way you're going to have to do it. I apologize that I'm not going to hold your hand through, you know, the whole demonstration process. Um, if it's that big of a deal, let me know in the comments and I'll do another video somewhere down the road where I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. Um, it's really not that hard, though. Like I said, go back and watch the Field Dimensions video. Field creation made faster and easier. That'll show you exactly how to get that done, right? And that's all there is to it. Um, the other thing, like I said, some people like I have in here, um, instead of using the foliage creator script, because for whatever reason, maybe when you get up in the bigger map sizes, uh, maybe some of your GRLE size has changed, and or maybe you're just anal and you want to have your own script that says tree generator, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, the only thing you're doing there is making an additional entry inside your uh, i3D like I did here. So you can see where I have my info layer tree generator. OK, and then you can either give it an option value of one, two or three. Um, it doesn't make sense to do that at once. So I gave it an option value of one. Uh, because you're no longer going to be utilizing, uh, you're not, I don't want to confuse anybody with it, but if you pause the video, look at what I did here. Okay. You'll end up putting another info layer in like that. And you'll also have to put the file address up here. So you're going to have to create, uh, do I have one in here? Uh, I didn't really want to get into this. And so here I am doing it anyhow. Shame on you, Bauer. Yeah, right here. So I have an info layer underscore tree generator dot GRLE. All right. So you're going to have to create a second GRLE um, and second info layer that you can use specifically for your trees. Uh, to me, again, I, I did it here because I was only using it as an example, but it's pointless when you can just use your foliage info layer. Right. All right. So hopefully I didn't confuse anybody. Hopefully that that made a, at least a little bit of sense and you'll be able to work your way through this tree creator you know, easily without too many issues. Uh, like I said, besides the field dimension script, this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, it saves a lot, a lot of time when you're, when you're putting in your forest it takes, it takes a lot of the, a lot, just not guesswork, but it, it just makes it easy. It makes it way easy. Alrighty. So that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Any questions, you know, hit me up in the comments and like I said, if you find these uh, videos helpful at all in any way, shape or form, you know, definitely leave a like and subscribe if you can. It, it helps me out. It's been a really slow, slow crawl so far, but little by little, we're getting there. And I have a lot of things planned for the future, so eh, hopefully it won't take long. But anyhow, 
like I said, if, if you find them helpful, you know what to do. And with that being said, I am Bauer Brown and I will see you on the next one.